Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy. I'm me. That's RJ. Um, and today we are taking part in the Homestead World collaboration with Liz Zorab. I'm not even sure I'm saying that right. She is Zorro. in... Zorro? No, Zorro. Oh. That's her last name. She's in Wales in the UK. <gasps> she lives in a whale and her name's Zorro? That's no, awesome. Wales. She lives in Wales? Wales. <sighs> Like a big, like, killer no, whale. Not a shadow. whale. No. She in the United in Kingdom. You know, England, overseas. Oh, that's yeah. not exciting. Yes, it is. Living in a whale is much more exciting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the last that. name Zora. <laughs> anyway, she is an awesome lady. So, don't shake the table. All right, the other person taking place in this is Danny and Wani of Deep South Homestead. And they're in Mississippi, not too far from us in the United States. So, all right, you ready to dive into this? Okay, so there is a number of questions in this collaboration, but first we want to say a lot of people refer to themselves as homesteaders, or um, in Liz's case, it's an allotment, which is what I grew up in. It's a lot of people had allotments. Um, it's an overseas thing, I think, um, or a parcel. I don't even know what they call them. I think here in the United States, they, they list them by parcels, don't they? What's a parcel? It's a piece of land. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Anyway, we prefer to call ourselves a small family farm. Um, it's been that way for a long Question time. number one. <laughs> He's like, yeah, we're moving on. Okay. It's been that way for a long time in our family. It's just what we prefer. So, farmstead, homestead, small family farm. Okay. Where in the world are you is question number one. Where are you, son? I am right here with my box of conversation arts. Right here on this wooden beach in this house. And in where my... is this house and this farm? It's in Oklahoma. It's well known that we actually live just south of a small town called Lenape, Oklahoma. It's the cowboy capital of the world. So, um... Where approximately is your location? I guess we kind of clarified that, huh? <laughs> it says in reference to major cities. Um, we are 60 miles north of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. So, northeastern corner of Oklahoma. Okay. You um, can Google us. You pretty much can. We're on Google Maps. So, we're not sticky about where if you want to see just go to the google maps and type in the straw family farm and it'll show you exactly where we are what is the size of your homestead small it, for here it's considered small but for homesteads as far as homesteads go um we're kind of large to a lot of people because we've got 45 plus acres um we say that because we also own a right away that the train goes on um and when I say own, I mean, yes, we own the right of way. Acres. Yeah, it, it's just over 45 acres. Oh. So, right at that. Um, which seems big for Homestead, but according to here, it's not. Um, the government programs don't even start to recognize you until you have at least 80 acres here. So, it is what it is. All right. What uh, is your Homestead rural or urban? It's very rural. Um, the town that we are south of, when we say we're in Lenape, I think the census has it maybe, maybe a triple-digit town. And that's if you count, like, and I, I want to say like 300 people, maybe. There's a post office, a volunteer fire department. The there is. We have um, a volunteer fire department. We're not even um, rich or big enough to have a full-time fire department. Um, we have one city clerk. And her office is in an old rock gym. It's a historical society. It's a historical society building, and it used to be what's left of the school. There's not even a school here anymore. So um, my husband graduated from that school, and there was 11 in his class. So when we say it's rural, super, super rural. Correct? There's not even a gas station in our town. There's no um, grocery store. There's no anything. Right? What is the climate and weather like? Okay, well, um... It's kind of cold for my blood, but it could be a tick warmer. I could take that. I mean, really. Well, in August and September, we call it the Indian summer or dog days of summer. July and August. July, August, September. 
because it gets up to at least 100. It can be 110, it can be 104. Um, those are our 100 degree day or months. Um, 80s, 90s in the summer. Right now we're in spring. It is. I know 70. this is the end of February and we are sitting at like 70 degrees or so. Um, so with Oklahoma, it can be freezing at 29 degrees at night and then up to 70 during the day. The table. So our the next question is when is your like your growing season? When is the last? And it just for an FYI, it's 70 today. Monday? No, wait. Last? Wait, this is Wednesday. So yeah, last Wednesday. Thursday, Mom was driving through snow and ice. Yes. So I mean, it changes daily. Yeah, Dan Daniel at Armstrong Homestead. He had his studded tires on for ice and snow for two days. That was it. He had them on, but you can't leave them on the whole time because we just don't get enough uh, snow and weather. He's a state trooper. So, yeah. He, he's touched on that, how our weather goes back and forth. Our last freeze is April. Um, our last frost date is also in April, so it's like the last week to week and a half of April. Um, our first frost dates are the first part of November. Um, we say that and it's well known like on the internet and that's what they put us at um, we're a 6A growing season it depends on which map you look on sometimes we're 6B sometimes we're 6A but um, this last year Miss Pig is fussing uh, last year November we pulled our last watermelon out of the garden mm. so yeah growing season was supposed to end long before that but when it's nice, it's nice. Um, the water here is really wishy-washy. Okay? Water here, not water. I'm water. sorry. Well, they both go with the flow. But anyway. So, um, it does vary from year to year. On number seven. And there have been years that we've had two and three foot of snow, have we not? Mm -hmm. And there's years that we've been iced in. Mm -hmm. This year, not so much. Last year, not so much either. Do you have any year, animals? Ten that's your question here in a minute. I think this year we had 10 days that were below freezing. Just saying. Maybe where it 20. stayed below Yeah, freezing. where it stayed below freezing. So, Alright, All right. Yes. next one is we yours. What kind of animals? Well, the shoulder list is what we don't have. We don't have a camel. <laughs> we need one of those. Lack of We trying. do not have an no, elephant. Come on. What kind of animals do we have? We have chickens, cats, Dogs, horses, the pig donkeys, that's throwing a fit, a pig, uh, sheep, sheep goat, goats, zebu, ze cows, zebus, cows, um, ducks. Anything? Else? Did you say goat? Sorry. Oh, I said goat. You said sheep. Yeah, it's already. Did goat. you say wild mustangs and it's wild horses? It's the same thing. No, equine is all the same thing. We have equine then. <laughs> and then we have okay. me. And, and then he's the biggest animal on the on the farm. What fruit, veggies, or grains do you grow? Whatever mom doesn't kill. Um, pretty much. Uh, that kind of goes for the next question. But first, we have to address that our legal government crop is our wool and hay. Those are the two things that on our census are, are what constitute us being a farm, a small farm. So wool is a crop. Um, here in the state of Oklahoma, it's on the census and all that stuff. And um, then the hay, because we sell it, it becomes our crop. It is called native grass. And so that would be like, in comparison to like a wheat farmer, I guess, or whatever you want to say, or a corn farmer. That's what we grow. We get one cutting off of it, and it is native grass to Oklahoma prairie. So... Um, which is really just, if you want to get technical about it, it's a mix of rye grasses and what else is out there? Blue stem. Some blue stem, some rye grass. So, anyway, uh, but those are our legal, makes us a small farm, is the hay and the wool, our two crops. And I know that they're talking about growing season, but we do grow wool, and it is our crop, and it has a season, so... Year yeah. round. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Anyway, we grow those. Then we've got, what, eight fruit trees and two pecan trees. And those are down in the garden. 
And then anything else, we have a grow tower that we let the kids experiment with. We do some herbs. And it towers for everything. No, it doesn't. Anyway, well, it so I don't have a green thumb, so I grow whatever no, survives. Okay? And the next crop is how do you grow your crops? However I can. It says organic, intensive, commercial, raised bed, container, row gardening, greenhouse. I've tried it all, she, and pretty much, if it works. She's more of a religion grower. <laughs> I just well, plant, plant the it seeds and, and pray. pray. <laughs> so, all right. So we do grow veggies. Do you we, sell any produce, animals, or things you create for income? Anything yes. and everything, folks. I will see uh, you a plate right back here. No, China. you will not. It says that you it's create. For sale. No. Okay, How so the products we that we, we sell, what do we sell? We sell goat's milk. I'll sell you eggs. a package of things. Oh, you don't have dime. a license to sell those. A dime. Just a dime, folks. Just one dime. You don't have a license to sell those. You have you to have a commercial grade. Commercial. It, you're, it's food. Okay, so. I'm going to charge your cable right here, folks. It works half the time, half the time. It doesn't. It's kind of wishy washy. So, what all do we sell? We sell the wool, we sell yarn and rovings, which are different forms of wool. We sell soaps that I make, goat's milk soap. We make soaps out of the garden. Um, we don't use any essential oils in ours. Well, I don't say that. We don't use any essential oils in our soaps, but we do use them in, uh, and they're more infused oils than they are essential oils. So, um, anyway, what else do we sell? The lotions, the bars, the things. I do some sewing, so I sell some sewing bags. Um, I do a little quilting. I normally end up giving my quilts away as more than selling them. Um, I do sell some crocheted, some item, crocheted items. Um, we do sell lambs. Um, we have very distinct flocks out here, and we have one flock that is RJ's for each flock, and he sells the lambs to keep paying for his feed for the year. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, hurry it up. All right, I think that covers the product and stuff. Do you grow solely for your own needs? No, um, we grow for educational purposes. So the kids will be out here growing. We're growing. If we have an abundance, I'll can and put up. I do a lot of experimenting because I'm not. I didn't grow up canning. His parents, uh, Lee's parents, did. My grandma taught what me what she whatever i come to her and say okay this is the crop i have stub it this is the crop i have what do i do with it i learned stuff like food dehydration um making apple leather uh, pumpkin leather we love the leathers um, and i don't know how to say that in england what that would be it's like a here in the united states they have these things called fruit roll-ups and they're kind of like all natural fruit roll-ups so i don't know what you call them um but my grandmother used to do it in the sun, so, and the Indians used to do it out on rocks, but RJ insists that I do it someplace clean. Um, food dehydration and that kind of stuff, so anything extra, I'd go to her and say, this is what I've got, how do I best put it up, and she would teach me. So, my education is hit and miss on that. We do the best we can. Do you grow, oh, I said that one. Do you grow solely for your own needs? Do you have health issues that impact or guide your home stay? Do they affect how you live and work your land? Yes, I suffer from laziness. <laughs> Actually, I don't suffer from it. I just kind of enjoy every minute of it. <laughs> okay, so this is one of the questions. Um, and people laugh at me, but... Work smarter, not harder. He does have some... I don't have any health issues. He does. Um, I suffer from laziness, guys. RJ it was, just was a miracle baby. And um, when he was born, he turned six months old living in an oxygen tent. His lungs were severely underdeveloped. He's got some <laughs> lung damage. Um, <laughs> he is very, very chemical sensitive. And about the time that Lee's folks wanted to move to town, the town that we lived in wanted to spray chemicals to kill the mosquitoes and fog the town kind of thing. And when we talked to the doctor about it, he says there's no way to seal up your home to keep that from getting in because you have air conditioning that it would seep through. Even if you went inside, they were gonna do it in the summer. 
unless you went inside, kept the uh, air from circulating from outside into your home, sealed up all the cracks in your windows and doors. There was no way to keep him from being exposed to that. Um, so we moved. We, we set out to move, and hence that's when Lee's book says, you know, we're trying to move to town because of different reasons. Um, we were trying to get out of town to get him away from chemicals and pests and just kind of do our own thing. You said be a pest. We are a pest to get away from pests. Stop to get away from them. Um, and quit. They can't hear over this. This jacket is kind of a windbreaker. Pig, pig, you know. So he does have health issues, but most of it is just a removal of chemicals and. Um, some of the pollens affect him, but it's nothing that we grow. It's just what's in the air, correct? So it did guide us to this land and why we're here, but it doesn't really impact what I grow or foods that we eat. We don't have any food allergies. He's allergic to every chemical under the sun, but no food. I'm allergic and, to no. vegetables like broccoli, <laughs> he, he peas, says that. lettuce. <laughs> He's not allergic to them. He just doesn't like them. All right. <laughs> How long have you been homesteading? Okay, so how long have we been farming? Mm -hmm. Lee was brought home mm -hmm. to this farm, but they only harvested hay back then. There was no other animals here other than a couple of horses. Um, so our lifestyle came about with RJ, mm -hmm. um, getting rid of chemicals out of him, uh, out of his life, and just kind of it moved here and then of course when you live in the country there's a big garden and you have to do and we moved out here in october and there was still a garden from his parents so we kind of had to just deal with it you know it, here's this garden oh harvest what you want out of it we had zucchini and what was it a cantaloupe we had cantaloupe everywhere i didn't know what to do with it so i had to figure it out huh you spent a lot of time in the bathroom this year i did if you overeat cantaloupe you will end up in the bathroom. Just saying. Alright. Do you like homesteading? I love being a small family farm. I love everything no, about it. No, but I haven't found my winning lottery ticket yet, so... You don't like living here? He wants a million dollars in a beach house. But I keep telling him you cannot own beachfront property and have your horses in a roping arena. Why not? Have a roping arena right on the beach. Nope. Tide will come up and clean it out for me every day. Wash it away, too. So, and anyway. tie it down. Uh-huh. Yeah. With All right. So, it. how long have you been home? I guess we'd have to... You, we moved out here when you were six. Um, mm -hmm. We finally... You already answered that question. We're on 15. You no, said, no. do we like homesteading? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. But I didn't ever finish how long we've been doing this. Lee's been doing all his life, but probably since six. So... How many years? 14? Two. Right at. Right at 14 years. Trace. What to sink No, you're not going to say 14. Siete, ocho, nueve. I like home. I like the animals and the farming and everything. So, yeah, what yes, homestead activity do you like the most? Annoying mom on camera. That's the best one ever. Quit ever. making so much noise on my jacket. It's like windbreaker material, so I know that you guys can hear that. So, what is your favorite homesteading activity? So, or farming activity? You don't like your horses best? Not much I annoy, enjoy annoying you. Okay, that's not a farming activity. That's just an activity every child does. Oh. Well, then, yeah, I guess we go with the horses. <laughs> so, our... Take the horses and go to the beach. Not gonna take if somebody ever gets a winning line ticket, I just want a million dollars and a beach house. My favorite activity, of course, is I didn't even use a million dollars to pay for the beach house. If you just give me the million, <laughs> boop, boop, done. And how you're going to pay for the electric and the taxes and all that stuff. Um. Yeah. I had a million dollars in the beach house, guys. <laughs> I kind of lost it to the IRS, though. <laughs> So, um, my favorite activity would be probably lambing and learning um, and teaching the kids because we do have a learning farm. It's open to the public and to teach the kids and people that come out here is just... Always an adventure. 
It is. Um, the kids are amazing. The adults are kind of surprising at times. Shocking. Weird. But anyway. <laughs> All right. So those are our 15 questions. Um, is there anything you want to add about how we do things here in Oklahoma? Yeah. What? Well, we do things different than the people that in the ocean do them. <laughs> but, you know, Hence we're the whole still... reason for this collaboration. Yeah. I mean... Okay, I said, did you have anything you wanted to add, not reiterate? Oh. No. Well, let me think here. Oh, Lord, he's thinking. His head's going to explode in a little bit. So, mm -hmm. we better get off of here. So oh, oh I, don't, I know what I want to add. Okay. Us people in Oklahoma do not get to sled very much. That has nothing to do with farming. Oh. <laughs> Alright, we're off of here, you guys. I hope you thinking, enjoyed it. I know, your head's going to explode. We'll make sure that doesn't happen on camera because we are a family-friendly, no-violent channel. I can be the headless horseman. No, not on the channel. So, all right, we will catch y'all later, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Liz and Danny and Wanda, for putting on this collaboration, and we hope that we can join you again sometime. Bye.